Dorita, this is Matt looking for permission to go live. You are all set, Mr. Hart. Very good. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Public Safety Forum. My name is Matt Hart. I am West Hartford's town manager. And joining me tonight is our chief of police, Vernon Riddick. We also have our mayor, Sherry Cantor, as well as many of our other councilor, town council members who are either joining us virtually tonight or listening in. Uh, Deputy Mayor Leon Davidoff, uh, Councilor and Public Safety Committee Chair Carol Anderson Blanks, Councilor and Minority Leader Mary Fay, Councilor Lee Gold, Councilor Beth Kerrigan, Councilor Liam Sweeney, Councilor Ben Wenigrad, and Councilor Christopher Williams. The Chief and I are here tonight at the request of and the urging of our Mayor and the Town Council. The Town Council, as you know, is our town's governing body, and they are the policy leaders of our community. They all take public safety very seriously. The Chief and I, we both have significant experience in our respective fields, and we have good connections around the state and around the country. Uh, Chief Riddick, in particular, is a law enforcement leader in the state of Connecticut, and I'm very, very pleased to have him here with us in West Hartford. So why are we here tonight? Why are we having this conversation? We understand that people in our community have concerns and questions about public safety and quality of life issues here in West Hartford and in the capital region. So this summer, this summer we have seen car thefts, including one that involved the abduction of a two-year-old child. We continue to see crimes committed by juvenile offenders, and we have experienced a recent spike in thefts of catalytic converters. Our popular town center does attract some late night activity that can be problematic, such as fighting, littering, and, and property damage. And we have recently seen a semi-organized rally of ATVs and other off-road vehicles riding through our community. When we look at the larger community, we have also seen people discharge their weapons at homeowners during the course of a motor vehicle theft and commit other aggressive acts. So some of these things, some of these things have been happening for years with some new wrinkles. And what's happening in West Hartford is not unique. It's not unique to our town or even to our region. As the chief will explain, we experience many of these crimes in cycles, depending on economic and socioeconomic conditions. Uh, the chief will also talk about the approaches that the West Hartford Police Department and its partners are taking to address these issues. And we have employed many of these strategies for a long, long period of time, and we continue to refine and improve them. The chief will also talk about some of our newer strategies, such as our drone and our video sharing program. In addition, I want to emphasize, and I know the chief will too, that many of these issues Go beyond, go beyond the scope of law enforcement. And that is why it is so important, why it is so critical that we as a state dedicate appropriate resources to preventative measures and services that are designed to reduce recidivism, especially for our juvenile and first time offenders. We wanna have this conversation here with you today. We want your questions and your input because this is the very essence of community policing, law enforcement and the community working together. Tonight, you can ask any police related question that you have, we'll do our best to respond. If we don't have an answer, we will get back to you. I wanna thank the men and women of the West Hartford Police Department who serve this community each and every day. I appreciate their dedication, their commitment to keeping us safe and their intelligent approach to their work. I also wanna thank the members of our state delegation, State Senator Derek Slapp, State Representative Jillian Gilchrist, State Representative Tammy Exum, and State Representative Kate Farrar. The mayor, Chief Reddick, and I routinely talk with the members of our delegation and including about potential reforms to state law. The members of our delegation are very, very responsive to us. And they're working at their level to maintain public safety and to reduce recidivism. So before I turn to Mayor Cantor, 
And then to Chief Riddick, let me review a few ground rules. We are recording this session tonight. We're broadcast live. We're also recording for future broadcast. I'm going to ask all of us, all of us to treat one another with dignity and respect. And that includes one person, one person speaking at a time. If you are calling in, please mute your lines unless you're speaking. We will take questions by phone as well as through WebEx. If you would like to speak, please identify yourself and limit your question or comment to approximately three minutes. Also, please don't ask a follow-up question until everyone else has had an opportunity to talk. As tonight's facilitator, I will enforce these rules uh, if necessary. And I really thank you for your cooperation. So I'm now very pleased to turn to our mayor, uh, Sherry, Con Sherry Cantor for her opening remarks and comments, and then we'll turn to Chief Riddick. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you so much, Matt. And uh, thank you all for joining us tonight, to my colleagues that are here, um, and to all of the public, uh, whoever from the public is here and, and interested in, in this topic and has questions or concerns. Um, we are here to listen. Uh, we also want to make sure that you have the right facts and are hearing the real the real story. And, and so that's really important that uh, we do know recently there was a, a something posted on Facebook uh, about a, a, some kind of break in that was not accurate. It was actually completely fabricated almost completely fabricated. And we want to make sure that you are getting accurate, honest information. Um, so I also want to really thank our, our town manager, Matt, who you just heard from, and Chief Riddick uh, for their professionalism and commitment uh, to their uh, to serving the town of West Hartford and to being responsive to you. Um, that is our top priority. Community, police, community policing is so critical for the success of the police uh, and the success of the community. We are all partners in the safety of our community. We're, we're partners in, you know, not only from the public safety standpoint, but from the public health standpoint. We've seen so many reasons why we are joined together and how we depend on each other and rely on each other to keep each other safe. Uh, one of our primary goals as elected officials, and surely mine as mayor, is to keep our community safe. Uh, and our, your personal safety is, a, again, a primary concern, uh, but also is the safety of your property. Uh, and so there's, we always are, are aware of what's going on. Well, we, we try to be aware of everything that's going on. Um, and we are really do care and we're here to listen to you. So I wanna thank the business associations that had a, we had a round table recently to talk about concerns that they had uh, in some increased incidents in the southeast corner of town. Uh, we appreciated their candid and respectful conversation um, and being a couple of them being victimized and, and, and what we are doing to, to help and support them and what they can do to uh, minimize the likelihood of, of uh, a crime occurring. So I, again, want to thank you. This is a partnership. This will not be our only conversation. Uh, it's not like, oh my gosh, I missed it. And, you know, so nobody told me we try to get the information out. We really do. It's hard. We're all bombarded with so much coming at us all the time, but we periodically will do this, especially when there's a, a, a common concern or some change in activity. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to the town manager and the, and the chief. Thank you to my colleagues. Uh, and I think I'm I'm going back to Matt because he's the MC. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mayor. We appreciate your leadership. And uh, now I'd like to turn the floor over to Chief Vernon Riddick. Chief. Thank you, sir. Um, Madam Mayor, as always, a pleasure to see you and to be in your company and to the public at large. And thank you for joining us on this evening, uh, taking time with your busy schedules because this is something that's important to you. Um, you know, let me say, I, I do have the, been blessed by the good Lord to have a lot of experience, but the team that we have here in West Hartford is second to none. It really, it really is. We work very well together. Um, people know to respectfully, quote unquote, stay in their lanes and provide guidance and um, suggestions as necessary. But 
folks are allowed to do their job and to be a law enforcement official that's extremely important so thank you madam mayor and thank you mr manager for your trust and respect um i think it's i'd be remiss to not mention the men and women of the west hartford police department it's been a turbulent 18 months for all public safety officials but uh, specifically um police officers and you your officers of the West Hartford Police Department have answered the bell every day, multiple times throughout the day. Uh, we have held them accountable. Uh, they have risen beyond the call of duty, in my estimation, uh, sitting, working with them as their chief. Uh, going through COVID, uh, we did have some positive uh, officers who were tested positive, but our people came to work. You know, uh, some folks had the ability and we're very grateful for that to stay at home and work from home. But your police officers came to work every single day in an attempt to keep you, the community, and their fellow coworkers safe. So, you know, there's been times that, you know, when you sit at the top, you get accolades and, and people, you know, say very nice things about you. And I'm very humbled to hear that. But I am nothing, absolutely nothing. If you don't have a team working alongside you, dedicated, committed, and willing to put their lives on the line, their reputations on the line, and sacrifice their time, uh, whether or not they're getting paid, they don't even get paid for all the time they put in. So I appreciate that. And I think the public needs to understand that as we continue to go forward. Uh, a couple things. Uh, before I get into some of the steps that we're doing, we're going to go back, if we will, and I will be very brief with this, uh, no more than five minutes. Uh, I want to go back to the police accountability bill last summer uh, of 2020, which really kicked a lot of what we're going through um, going through now off and give you some updates as to our status. And then I will uh, transition into what's going on uh, currently. So I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully you all can see that if I get a thumbs up. Awesome, thank you. So, uh, Public Act 20-1, Police Accountability Bill. Uh, drug testing, we are in compliance. We have selected a vendor and we've tested our, our police officers and thankfully no one has tested positive. Implicit bias training, we already had undertook this in West Hartford many, many years ago. Uh, we are in compliance and we are personnel have been tested uh, for their understanding. And the mechanism that we use is uh, power uh, DS, power, power DS, so we can make sure that our people are tested, they're reading, and have understanding. A crowd management policy that is currently on our website, and we are in compliance. Recruiting and retaining minority police officers. Again, from our community action plan, you've seen that. We've taken many steps with that. We have submitted our documentation to the state. We are in compliance. Civilian review boards, we assisted with orientation with the town manager, corporation council, uh, and others, and that board is up and running uh, effective July of this year. Feasib feasibility impact study up with social workers. Uh, we sent that information out earlier this year in January in compliance with the request. Uh, moreover, uh, we are currently working, and again, under leadership of the town manager and the mayor, with social services and last week we offered a conditional officer of appointment to additional social worker to work as a liaison between the police department social services and the public and that individual did accept the position i'm very pleased with that a limit on consent searches we are in compliance we have initiated training and completed training for all of our personnel prohibition for asking for non-driving identification we are in compliance have con, um, completed training. Use of force reporting, we are in compliance. Duty to intervene training for all of our personnel, we are in compliance and have initiated testing. Badges and name tags, we are in compliance for non uniform personnel. Their badge and IDs must be displayed. We are in compliance. Behavioral health assessments, uh, there are some police departments who have yet to get up and running. Uh, we have uh, started and we have tested several of our officers and personnel already. We are in compliance. 
including uh, the one thing we did with the behavioral health assessments. We started with myself, the assistant chief, and all the command staff of the police department. And I was the first individual to get tested. And uh, they said I was sane. I don't know how, but I, I passed, and the rest of the team passed too. So we're well on our way. Our use of force changes. Again, if you've been in tune to our public safety meetings, we put out videos and we are in compliance and we have tested our personnel. Uh, qualified immunity. There is a, a lot of discussion regarding this topic. Our people have been tested. We are in compliance and we have understanding of the new law. Dashboard cameras and body work cameras. As many of you know, we have had dashboard cameras in the town of West Hartford since approximately 2013. Uh, we have currently selected a vendor, Axon, for our body cam and for our new uh, dash cams that will be implemented. And we are currently in the funding phase and the information has been passed on to finance, but the uh, waiting for the appropriation of funds. Uh, CALEA accreditation slash state accreditation, we are in the process there. We have to 2025. We will be in compliance well prior to that. And that concludes my short presentation. Next, let's go to, you know, fact and, and fiction and dealing with some of the issues uh, that have been in the press, that have been in all of your minds. Uh, I fielded questions, emails uh, from the public, and it's very, very important and paramount for us, too. So Cadillac converters are an issue, ATVs, stolen motor vehicles, uh, juvenile crime, uh, recidivism, all of these things. So what is West Hartford doing? Again, under constant consultation with the town manager uh, and the mayor and even taking suggestions about promoting ourselves better, uh, we have initiated a Cadillac converter detail, which we have officers on various nights of four to six police officers in unmarked vehicles and what we call cold vehicles. Uh, cold cars are vehicles in which you cannot tell they're police vehicles. Whereas an unmarked vehicle, sometimes you can look and see that that's a police vehicle. So that's done by design and by uh, intention. And we've been out, uh, set up surveillance in certain areas and attempt to catch perpetrators uh, in these crimes and jumping out on them and arresting them and bringing them to justice. What else have we been doing? We have, we are part of a regional task force for the capital region with the $5 million pass-through grant that came from the federal government down to the state of Connecticut. Now, let me explain this regional task force. This is not regional policing. You know, in a manner it is, but we still have our full complement of officers. We've dedicated uh, two officers to this task force on a semi, um, a part-time basis, and as needed, it could be a weekly basis. This group will be together up until December of this year where the funding has to be spent and they will be attacking catalog converter deaths, specifically ATV, stolen motor vehicle and violent crime. So it's a very important for the public to know that. In addition, we also have officers part of the statewide narcotics task force. We have two officers working there. The importance is, is a force multiplier. So we're able to take our forces and our information and our personnel and we couple them together with these different task force of different agencies. And when we have crime that's occurring in our town, we can tap into that resource. We can also tap into the intelligence, which is extremely important as far as the information that's coming within our state and even from without our state at the federal level coming in. We have an officer assigned to the FBI Violent Crime Task Force, one police officer. Again, he's assigned to the CAP region. So we have the ability to draw him back in to assist with crime that may be occurring in our town. You know, there's been a lot of the, the center details. Now we'll move to some of the quality of life issues that we have going on. You know, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights after 11, 12 o'clock, a little different clientele, a younger clientele comes in, uh, patronizing our establishments, our restaurants. And, uh, you know, we've all been young and, and done some wild things, occasionally get some fights. Uh, people don't use the trash receptacles as they should. So we have upwards of four to six police officers every single weekend 
uh, dedicated on LaSalle and Farmington Avenue and that whole quadrant over there monitoring and make sure things stay safe so everyone can, have, can enjoy themselves uh, over the evening hours. Uh, most recently, we've utilized a drone uh, that gives us overall coverage. Again, force multiplier, not big brother, but a force multiplier to give us a, a sky view and to cover more territory. Um, you know, about three weeks ago, uh, under having the drone up, we we're able to see a fight that was starting and deploy resources there to prevent that fight from coming to fruition. So we're very helpful for that. It also allows us to see if we have people who are littering, and we can uh, you know zoom in and stop them and have them either pick it up or issue a citation if need be. Our camera program, uh, you know, uh, November of 2020, we sent out a tickler of you know coming soon. And in late December of 2020, going to 2021, we put out a news release touting our camera program. Uh, again, we can't take all the credit. We did steal that idea from Bristol Police Department and the Waterbury Police Department, in which we ask our residents and our business owners to, if they have cameras, to allow us access to the video and the remote chance that a crime does occur, we can access that video. It's important to know that uh, we are not monitoring other cameras. So it's just the access to the camera. And, and over as we continue to go forward, we hope to expand. Uh, in the latter part of January of this year, uh, we participated in the uh, Ring Camera Program. So those folks who have Ring cameras, we are now looped in to get those videos also. That's, that's really good stuff. You know, very, very important. Uh, we have our beat officers and our patrol officers, community relations officers walking through town center. And we're going to expand out to other areas and sections of town, uh, asking businesses and homeowners if they'd like to participate in the program. This is coupled with a social media uh, blitz, too. And that's headed by Lieutenant Aaron Vafiatis. And his phone number is 860 570 8821. If you need any additional information regarding our video sharing program, again, that's Lieutenant. Aaron Vafiatis, don't ask me how to spell it, you have to sound it out, 860-570-8821. Um, if you'd like to participate, we also have information on our website, uh, Google us, West Hartford PD, and it will pop up and you can get more information. So we're really trying to be proactive and reactive to the concerns uh, of the community. Uh, as of today, we've actually uh, it's been up and running for a couple of days. We put out a news release with our tip line. Uh, this tip line can be used confidential, uh, confidentially uh, regarding ATVs, kind of like converters, stolen motor vehicles, whatever. Whatever you'd like to let us know. Uh, that information will soon be in our chat when I hit enter. Uh, hopefully that comes in. You can have that information there for those who are online. Okay, it's not working. But the tip line number is 860-570-8969. Again, that number for our tip line, 860-570-8969. You can choose to remain anonymous. anonymous. We also have our email. Uh, again, you can remain anonymous. WHPD tips. Again, WHPD tips at westhartfordct.gov. Again, that information has been sent out in the news release. Uh, it's on our, our website, and we're very excited uh, to get this information out there. Again, working with the town manager and the mayor, who have really been pushing on us to get more information out there uh, to, the public, to the public, and that's what we're doing. You know, when it comes to policing and some of these uh, issues that are occurring, uh, we, it's very important to remember, and I understand that uh, public safety officials, this is our job, this is our profession, and we, you look to us for guidance, but we looked at the same time to the public and the business community for a partnership. Uh, the true essence of community policing is all of us working together, and we can't lose sight of that. So we need help with locking doors. You know, taking your key fobs and putting them away from the vehicles, locking your, your homes, putting your valuables away. You know, these simple things are what we call target hardening. 
uh, using lights, alarm systems. You know, we will do our part, but if all of us together do our part, we're mitigating the impact and the accessibility to the criminal element, and we're actually hardening our entire town by decreasing our susceptibility uh, to these crimes. So please, everyone's, you know, we've lived in nice neighborhoods in West Hartford, and I know we all think it, it won't happen to us, and more than likely it probably wouldn't. But let's take those steps to work collaboratively uh, to stop and to mitigate and to make ourselves less vulnerable. ATV is going further in discussions again with the mayor and the town manager and corporation council. We are exploring a um, an ordinance, an ordinance regarding that. Uh, there are a couple of models uh, that are that are utilized out there. Uh, a couple again, we can't pursue uh, per statute, and you're not going to find many police chiefs who want to engage in pursuit. Uh, pursuits don't end well. Normally, you know, people crash. Uh, they either crash and now the perpetrator could be injured or an innocent civilian who's driving could be involved in these accidents and our police officers too. But what we can do with certain elements with an ordinance, uh, you know, some of the models that are out there, for example, there's a gas station that sees an ATV drive in and gas up and then, you know, boogie out of there. If we're doing surveillance in that area, we can levy fines against that establishment for allowing that individual to drive in and to gas up their ATV. Now that is totally separate if they trailer in their ATV that's permitted. If they're trailer it in and they grab gas versus driving it. So it's important to understand that. Again, using the tip line, if you know of people who are driving in certain places, provide that information to us and we can provide surveillance and then work on arrest warrants or anything else that we can possibly do, uh, towing vehicles, uh, giving out uh, infractions, summons. There's things that we can do despite some of the handicaps. And I, I've blabbed on for quite some time. I have a few more things to go over, but if there's any questions, uh, I can take a pause for a few minutes and answer any questions, but I probably have about five more minutes of some other things that we're in the process of doing or some additional suggestions. Thank you. Mr. Manager. Uh, Chief, we're going to take questions. We need to do it in a structured way, and Ms. Reinheimer has some guidance to give uh, those who have called in. So I would just advise that you complete your remarks, and then we can turn to that. Thank you, sir. What else can we do? You know, it's it's important, again, let's go back to the collaboration and the partnership. It's high tense, high drama times right now, right? So, you know, this factions pointing at fingers at this faction and, and people going back and forth. That's not going to do anything for, for, for us, all of us. It's not a matter of who should have done or why didn't they. We're at the point now of solutions. Let's work together for the greater good for all of our communities and specifically right now for the West Hartford community. It's not a matter of the police not doing this or the legislators not doing that and, and the public not doing X. Let's work together, come up with some constructive solutions. So there's a few things that we've discussed, again, with our delegation, with the town manager, and our meetings with the mayor. You know, one thing is germane to what's going on here, and we can't forget this as far as, you know, a holistic approach is, what are the root causes that are leading these individuals, these juveniles, to crime and others? And those have to be addressed. Those are out of my pay grade and our, our public safety pay grade, we can assist with programs, but if these kids are out at one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, either the parent is complicit or the parent cannot control their child. In either situation, the parents need to be held accountable, they need the assistance, and there needs to be programs in place. Two, you know, there's, there's been concern and co conversations regarding continuing to raise the age up to potentially 21. Uh, we are not in favor of that. There needs to be accountability. Uh, we should freeze the phrase the A's, hold individuals accountable. And accountable doesn't always mean arrest. Accountable means uh, whether it's counseling, uh, psychiatric care, medical care, uh, basic needs uh, cares. That's what all of that means. So we, we do need to think about that and go forward. Three. Establishment of escalating consequences for repeat offenders of serious juvenile crimes. You now, many times we come in contact with some of these individuals and or juveniles 
and they've been arrested four, five, 10, 15 times, and, but they're still out. You know, something needs to change regarding that. Again, we're not advocating for yanking our kids off the streets and throwing them into detention centers with no type of programs. But the advantage of some of these detention centers is they do have counselors, they do have mentors, they do have doctors, they do have public health and mental health officials who can provide assistance to them. So that's extremely important. Uh, monitoring these individuals who are repeat offenders, whether it's through an ankle, ankle bracelet or some other type of monitoring device, and provide the funding to have the human capital to oversee these services. Four, allowing the funding for, you know, right now we only have two juvenile detention centers. Uh, we have Bridgeport and Hartford. Uh, back in the day, we used to have New Haven. Again, we're not advocating for locking kids up, but it is an opportunity if we can provide some funding or some other source uh, to provide the assistance to these youth. That would be very, very helpful. Information sharing. Law enforcement officials can share information amongst ourselves. We don't have a mechanism in place currently to share that information. Whereas for an adult, we can just punch in through the computer system, NCIC or whatever, and pull up a person's arrest record. So some assistance with that at the state level would be extremely helpful. It's my understanding the delegation and other legislators are looking into this, so that comes, can come to fruition relatively quickly. Uh, next, you know, again, currently with the law, we can only hold a juvenile at the police facility for six hours. Uh, in those six hours, we make an attempt to find a guardian or the parent. If we cannot, we have to release them. So if we can extend those hours, uh, maybe 24 hours or 48 hours, again, not to penalize, but it is to have some accountability that you commit a crime and there are some consequences while we attempt to find a parent, uh, that will be helpful. You know, one change that occurred, you know, I forgot maybe eight to 10 years ago is when we used to hit the six hour mark, uh, DCF would come in, we have to notify DCF and they would come in and take custody of that juvenile. That is no longer the case. Now it's only in a situation of abuse or neglect. Uh, again, this is not pointing fingers, just stating fact. So there's, I'm sure there's budgetary reasons or probably a policy decision regarding that, but that's where we are currently. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, you know, one thing is maybe some changes with the pursuit policy. A lot of this can be done uh, out of post, police officer standards and training council. I do serve on that council, and we are currently taking this up at our next meeting in September. As in expanding the use of the four stop procedures, uh, currently you have roadblocks, which take vehicles, you have boxing in, uh, which takes motor vehicles, and you also have what's called the pit maneuver, where you've probably seen on television where there's a pursuit and a police vehicle hit the rear of the perpetrator, it causes them to spin out. We also have the tower tire deflation devices where it's, that doesn't include a vehicle, police vehicle, and with the training, and we can deploy these devices and the individuals can drive over them and not engage in the, in the pursuit. And the fallacy is that it causes the tires to blow out so they lose control. Uh, this equipment is designed not to have blowouts, to slowly have the air uh, dissipate out of the vehicles, out of the tires, so the operator can control the vehicle in a safe manner. So I ran through a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. It's a lot of information there. I, I do hope that everyone finds this helpful. And, uh, sir, my presentation is complete, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Really appreciate your good uh, explanation tonight and the points you covered. And, you know, we can reiterate those as, as we uh, continue the conversation tonight as people have questions. So now let me turn to uh, Ms. Reinheimer, who has some instructions for members of the public as well as folks who have called in. Jarita. Thank you, Town Manager Hart. Good evening, members of the public. If you are interested in participating in this WebEx to ask police-related questions, you're welcome to do so by going to webex.com, entering meeting ID 1324399054 and use password, password, sorry, capital T, capital M, three, one zero. I will repeat that. The meeting ID is one three two four three nine 
9054 and the meeting password is capital T, capital M, numbers 310. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerida, Ms. Reinheimer. We appreciate it. Now let's, uh, and Chief Riddick, somebody from the police department has put the information regarding the tip line in the chat feature. That's great. So folks have that available. Let's now engage in some Q&A. If people know how to use the raise your hand feature, we'll start with that. And then um, I'll, I'll continue onwards. So we'll start, I see a hand raised for a number that ends in five zero. It's uh, eight six zero and then it ends in five zero. If you want to identify yourself, if you have a question, a comment you'd like to make, please proceed. Tell Manager Hart, it appears that person um, is not unmuting their mic. Okay, very good. Um, I now see a hand raised by a Stefan, Stefan, uh, is it Masimic? I'm sorry, sir, if I mispronounced your name. Yeah, yeah. can you hear me? We can now. Great. Um, thank you uh, to Mayor Sherry Cantor, the town manager, Matt Hart. Uh, Police Chief uh, Vernon Riddick Jr., as well as the organizers, um, for allowing me a few moments to speak to you tonight. My name is Stefan Maximuk. We are Safe Street CT, a Connecticut-based coalition with a simple mission, to find out why we have seen a significant increase in dangerous and damaging crime in our communities and find out how to stop it. We are a nonpartisan group that has been created out of the necessity to bring safety back to Connecticut communities. You will hear tonight about some of the multitude of crimes that juveniles commonly commit, which have little to no consequence, including things like larceny, theft of a motor vehicle, theft of, theft of a firearm, possession of a, an assault rifle, possession of a high capacity magazine, assault on a police officer. For these repeat crimes, juveniles are routinely turned over to their parents, who oftentimes request the police to hold them, but they cannot. We want to let you know that we understand what you are going through, and we are here to support you and your community in finding solutions to this growing and ever-present danger facing towns just like yours all over this state. Our goal is to bring an end to the brazen crime wave sweeping towns across Connecticut. Our system includes active grassroots advocacy at the legislative level, demanding common sense legislation to prevent juvenile repeat offenders. Additionally, we are educating residents on how to keep themselves safe, including identifying and using technology to make residents aware of threats. We are also looking at efforts to support Connecticut communities in the hopes that individuals are not enticed to engage in this type of behavior and we support local police departments to ensure that they have the tools necessary to help prevent repeat juvenile offenses. We have one simple message for tonight and that is this. If you want to see this crime wave stopped, key legislators need to hear from each of you right now and at the time of the special session on this topic. Letters and phone calls are imperative to changing the narrative at the Capitol. This is the most vital piece of the puzzle for the immediate future. Let them know that the status quo is unacceptable and we demand change. Not just your legislators, but all legislators. You can tune in to our website, safestreetct.com for a list of legislators we recommend. Um, due to the format, I cannot answer any questions from the public tonight. But for more information, please join us on Facebook at Safe Streets CT, all one word, or send an email to safestreetct at gmail.com. Let us know you stand with safety for yourselves, your families, and all Connecticut residents. We promise to keep you informed with all our initiatives and provide any uh, ideas and support we have gathered to help keep you and your family safe. Thank you from the Safe Streets CT leadership team. Thank you, Mr. Maximuk. Thank you, Stefan. 
appreciate uh, your attendance tonight. Uh, before I move on to another caller, uh, Stefan mentioned we're working with, with our General Assembly. Um, as Chief Riddick and I discussed, uh, along with the mayor, we do routinely meet with the members of the West Hartford delegation. You know, we understand uh, from them, and perhaps you all are well aware, that the General Assembly, there's a bicameral, both houses, bipartisan uh, committee underway right now that is looking at a host of related reforms. So we have forwarded some of our ideas to the members of our delegation. Uh, Chief, I know you covered these uh, already, but maybe just a moment or two on some of the key things that we are recommending, if you don't mind. Okay, uh, again, uh, hopefully to freeze the, to raise the age if we can, uh, providing assistance to the families of these, these juveniles, getting to the root cause of why they are interacting and behavior, behaving in this manner. Information sharing uh, amongst law enforcement officials. Again, I think the delegation is currently working on that and assisting us uh, with that. And uh, maybe some funding for the uh, probation so we can have personnel to monitor the youth in crisis and deal with their issues when they are on ankle bracelets so people can know and monitor where they're going, the times that there are, because there's times that these, these juveniles, individuals, they commit crimes and they're on a, a bracelet already and, and there's nothing being done at that time. So that'll be very, very helpful. And, and again, any other uh, ideas that come in, that's what we're here for this evening. Um, you know, sometimes when you're in something, you need somebody from outside of your profession to come up with a, a good solution or a good idea. Those are just a few of things that we can we can work on collectively together without pointing fingers, but working as a team for all of our safety and security. Thank you very much, Chief. Appreciate that. All right, now let's move to other callers. I see a hand raised by a number, uh, area code 860, and it ends in 50. Is that the one I called on earlier? Hi, Matt. Yes, um, you need to remind them that they need to unmute themselves. They have unmuted themselves at the moment. Okay. Okay. Hi, this is Mark Walsh. Yes, Mark. Go Can you ahead. hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, uh, first of all, hi, Mayor. You know this format is going to be challenging for me. Uh, these questions are mostly directed to Chief Riddick. Uh, but first, I just want to make a statement. Somebody has to prove me different. But I believe that we're at a place right now all related to the police accountability bill whether it's the numbers of criminals that were arrested prior to or just about when the bill was enacted to what we are now. So, Chief Riddick, you should be aware of these numbers. And I think we need to incorporate Chief State's Attorney Richard Colangelo's name here tonight because if you are not aware of it, and I hope maybe I'm actually going to inform some people, 76% of the criminal cases in 2020 were dismissed or nollied, and most of them were erased. Now, what does that mean? 65,000 individuals were, had criminal cases against them. 49,400 were dismissed. So I got to ask you, Chief Riddick, how would you possibly encourage your police officers to risk their lives to, to really be proactive? I mean, we're at a state now. I'm a, I have a family of cops. My son's a cop. My brother just retired. My nephew's a Hartford cop of all places. And let me tell you, they speak frankly with me, and they are telling me straight up, why would I even do anything when, when they're, if they get arrested, if the prosecutor doesn't release them right away, the chief state to prosecutor, Richard Colangelo, is giving marching orders to the rest of the prosecutors in the state. 49,400 were dismissed. So, again, Chief Riddick, how would you possibly get them to go and be proactive, knowing that figure alone? All right. I, I won't give you a hypothetical. I'll give you an actual. What I have said is we have raised our hand and taken and took an oath to serve and to protect the public. That means if the laws are in our favor, we serve and protect the public. That means if the laws have been changed, we still serve and protect the public. 
we can't get involved with the politics and, and everything else. Now, am I foolish enough to think that human nature might not sneak into that and maybe some officers won't be as proactive as they were before? I think that's fair, 100%. But at the end of the day, no matter what's going around us, we have a job to do. And our job is if there's violent crime going on or crime that needs to make arrest, we shall. And the rest of that is out of our control. Um, we have learned and I have learned a long time ago, control what you can. And that's what you deal with. So that's been the message that I've given to uh, our police officers who continue to go out there and work hard every single day. It is definitely difficult. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to sit here and say it's not. Uh, it's definitely been challenging. But our officers have answered the bell. They really, really have. So I'm proud of them for that. And we're not unique. We're not the unicorn. There's many officers nationwide who are answering the bell every single day. But it is challenging and it is difficult. But no matter what, we have to go forward. Uh, we did not take this job to think it would be easy all the time. And none of us could have foreseen what we're going through right now. But that's part of raising that right hand and taking that oath. We still got to get it done. Chief Freddie. Uh, I'm sorry, Chief Freda. Can I can I go just forward just one second? So uh, I I beg to differ because the year before the police accountability went into in effect, there were a hundred, approximately 110,000 criminal cases. So uh, it's 47 percent less. And 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 please don't try to blame it on COVID, because of again the family and friends that are police officers. They're telling me this is happening. And I got one more question, then I'll, I'll, I'll go. Bias goes hand in hand with racial profiling. And we do have a number of visitors from Hartford and other places that come through the town. And, and I know I would like to know just two things. You know, what our motor vehicle stops were in 2018 as they were in 2020. Because 2019 is when all that started with the police accountability. But how is it possible to profile a car with tints so heavy you can't see the driver or you can't even run the plate? How is it possible to racial, racially profile somebody in a motor vehicle when you can't see who's driving? You can't run the plate. I don't get it. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Uh, Chief, any, any comments or response there? First of all, thank you, Mr. Walsh. I appreciate your commitment, uh, your passion that I hear in your voice. And I, I have those same, that passion, but my attitude's just different. And our officers are just different when it comes to that. To say, to just to discount and say COVID uh, had no impact is, it's false, sir. It's not accurate. Uh, the amount of vehicles on the road weren't there. People going back and forth to work weren't there. They weren't on the roads. They weren't out there. So there's going to be a, a decrease in the amount of motor vehicle stops because no one's out there. And, and obviously, you know, given in, when this disease and this virus first started, there was fear and, you know, a lot of things we know now that we didn't know before we got educated. So that was an impact. Uh, as far as our motor vehicle stats, I don't have that off the top of my head but I will provide that information uh, to you and we'll continue to be positive and we'll continue to go forward. In the racial profiling? I, I can't answer that if you're, you know, because you can rate, you can profile, you can profile a vehicle and attach that vehicle to a certain ethnicity. So that's so just by having tinted windows, you're I'm saying not gonna go back, I'm, not, brown I'm, listen, I'm not going to go back and forth to you. I'm just telling you, you asked me I'm a question. I'm just wondering how you do that with a tinted window. How is it did possible you, to raise Did you hear me? Out? Did you hear my response? You, or were you speaking over me? Did you I'm hear my response? Over you because I think you're saying by having tinted windows, we assume they're black and brown people driving. That's not what I said. Did you? What was my What was my response? Repeat to me what Go I ahead. said. Okay, let's not do that. Go ahead. Just hide no, the racial profile asking, when you can't see inside. I'm just asking you to repeat what my response was. Uh, sir, I'm, I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Manager. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Uh, let's see if we have other callers who have a question or who'd like to make a comment. You can either use the raise your hand feature if you know how to do that, or, um, or you can unmute your line.
manager hard. They don't have the ability to unmute themselves. We are going to have to call them. Okay. So do you want me to go one by one? Sure. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll go to Mr. Cortez, Alberto, any questions or comments you'd like to make tonight? How you doing, uh, Mr. Hart, uh, Madam uh, Mayor, Chief Riddick? Um, I, I have several, you know, I have a few concerns. Um, one is, you know, what are we doing to put pressure on our, our legislators? We needed, we need them in yesterday, uh, you know, in session to address these issues. You know, today's car, uh, today's break-ins, today's carjacking are tomorrow's home invasion. We've had a terrible home invasion in town 25 years ago. We had the Pettit incident that happened uh, a few years ago. Uh, what are we? What is the same now as then? Are we doing things different, or are we going backwards? Um, and these are some of the issues these leg legislators need to do. So, what are we doing to put pressure on our legislators to get back in? And then, um, I had one more question. And my other question is for uh, Chief Riddick: Is there anything else, any resources as a town that we can provide to the police department? Um, is, is there? more that you would need you know i know with the police accountability uh bill you know it, it kind of you, you probably have to shift your resources a little bit more um is there something that you can use now so we can be successful with some of the stuff that has been going on in town um and you know i see the community i heard about the community policing and i think that's good i think that's a great way of getting the officers more in the community walk in and out of their vehicles and making those interactions so we can uh address some of these issues and get, kind of get to know, you know, who's the players, if there's any in our town. Thank you, Mr. Cortez. Appreciate your questions and, uh, and comments. As the chief and I discussed earlier, I don't, I don't know if you had had a chance to dial in at that point in time. We are in pretty frequent communication with the members of our state delegation, as is Mayor Cantor. Uh, the General Assembly has appoint, appointed a bipartisan bicameral uh, committee that's working on a number of related issues. And we have made various suggestions uh, to our delegation and we'll continue to remain in, uh, in good communication with them. Uh, Chief, do you want to touch on the resources question that Mr. Cortez posed? Thank you for your question, Mr. Mr. Cortez. Now to ask a police chief this question, you put me in a really sticky situation. So here's my response. Uh, wants and needs. Uh, if you ask me, you know, hey, chief, with a magic wand, of course I would tell you I would love to have 20 or, or 30 more police officers, uh, maybe a half dozen canines and a helicopter and the like, right? But do we do we need that? No, we don't. But that's, that's a want. Uh, I am satisfied. Uh, again, there's some certain things you might on your wish list, but we're, we're appropriately staffed uh, with our funding. Um, the town has been very receptive and responsive to our request, our budget request. Again, I can always get greedy, but to provide the services that we need to provide in a manner that we need to do it to keep our community uh, safe and secure uh, and to be able to educate at the same time, uh, I'm satisfied on the need aspect, not the want, on the need. We're good. <laughs> Thank you for that, Chief. Thank you very much, Chief. Thanks again, Mr. Cortez. All right, we're now gonna move on to a phone number that starts in area code 203 and ends in 11, ends in 11. Do you have a question or a comment? All right, not hearing any. Uh, why don't we then move on to the next one I see, area code 860, phone number ends in 2222. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Um, you have to star six to unmute yourself. So phone number whose number ends in 2-2, two, two, you may start 6 to unmute yourself. Mr. Hart, you're welcome to move on. Okay, next one, uh, area code 860, um, number ends in 
82. If you have a question or comment, please hit star six. All right, next one, area code 860, number ends in 76. 76. Do you have a question or a comment? Please hit star six. Next phone number, 860, ends in 83. 83. Okay, next phone number, 860, area code 860, ends in 04. 04, do you have a question or a comment? Please hit star six. All right, then I do have a few names that I can call on. I see an Emmy. Emmy, if you have a question or would like to make a comment, please hit uh, star six. How about Gail Crockett? Ms. Crockett, if you have a question or would like to make a comment, please hit star six. And then we have a couple, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I apologize, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hart, Counselor Williams would like to, um, I'm sorry, Counselor Sweeney would like to address the um, members of the public. Great. I was going to turn to him next. We have two council members, additional council members who have joined us. Uh, Councillor Sweeney, then I'll ask uh, Councillor Fay if she has anything she'd like to add. Welcome, Councillor Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Hart and Chief. Thank you for a, a great presentation as usual. Um, um, one, I just wanted to say I appreciate everyone calling in tonight and the participation that's taking place. Um, I know that there are a lot of when it comes to public safety, um, everyone thinks about their own family, um, and it is, that is obviously as personal as it can get. Um, one of the things that I just hope that folks try to do when we have these types of conversations um, is try not to get personal with the people that are talking. And I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Walsh calling in and, and having his own uh, personal connections to, to the police. Um, but I just uh, really appreciate uh, Chief Riddick's responses tonight uh, and uh, and just trying to articulate what's going on there in the field. Um, but I think from the town's perspective, you know, the, we on the council are, are doing our best today to try to hear from you all in a productive ma manner. And um, what, what I will say is that when we have these types of conversations, it, it, it doesn't help to have the back and forth and, and um, I I do appreciate everyone's perspective, but I just hope that when we continue to have these conversations that we, we try not to talk over folks. Um, but I know that again, when we're talking about people's public safety, their, their own households, their children, uh, that is as personal as it gets. But at the same time, I just want to commend the chief on a fantastic e effort to deal with what is going on nationally, not just here in Connecticut, but a national growing uh, issue that is certainly uh, related to COVID, um, as uh, he, he pointed out. Uh, while some folks may not want to believe that, that is to, to each their own, you, you're entitled to your own opinion, not to your own facts. Um, and I appreciate Mr. Cortez's questions about what else can we do. I think that the, this past budget, uh, we have um, provided significant amount of support to the police. And, and we wish also that we could provide uh, a, a wish list to you as well. We wish we could get a wish list from the state. Um, but that is not the case. Um, but again, I just want to say thank you to everyone who called in tonight, everyone who participated. I'm glad to see so many members of the council here. I'm glad to see so many members of the public here. Uh, and, and then and Mr. Hart, just want to say thank you for your leadership on this and obviously to the mayor for doing an excellent job of, of both conducting this meeting as well as the meeting that we had with the business uh, associations earlier this week. Uh, and, and folks, I will put my email in the chat uh, and it is available on the website. Please feel free to reach out at any time with any questions. So. 
Thank you, Mr. Hart. Thank you, Councillor Sweeney. Appreciate your comments and, and your leadership. Uh, Councillor Fay, anything you'd like to share with the group? Uh, yes, Mr. Hart, thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Um, I don't wanna go too far on this because you all know where I stand. I back the blue, always have. I believe in strong law enforcement and that actions require consequences. I learned that as a child. I was taught that throughout my life. I was taught that through the ethics and behaviors in the corporate world, particularly with General Electric. So why are good people not being protected? I do believe our laws contribute greatly to this. And I do believe our legislators are not being held accountable. You can say pandemic. I agree pandemic was awful, it still is. Uh, I personally know why. And uh, you can't blame it on a, a certain event. Why did we not have these increases in crime when the economy fell out of the sky and most people lost their homes and it was a disaster? Companies went under and people lost their jobs. There wasn't a spike in crime like this. This is agitation. This is a lot to do with mismanagement of our large cities, people looting, people running around, and it's just trickled down to where we are now with juveniles committing these crimes. A woman almost got shot in Glastonbury simply for coming out of her front door while someone was breaking into her car. That's what I mean by escalation. And this is why I'm so passionate about this. The person who spoke from straight streets, thank you. This has nothing to do with politics. This has nothing to do with party. You know my family is from law enforcement. You know my grandfather was in charge of the FBI in the East Coast. You know several of my relatives are either NYPD or prosecutors or detectives. You know that. I back the blue tremendously. That doesn't mean that I don't support corrective measures for the bad apples. Of course I do. But that's a separate discussion. We have got to protect our citizens here. And I'm tired of hearing complaints day after day from residents, homeowners, people who have rental properties where people don't want to live here because they're afraid of getting something bad happen. And we, we've got to stop this. I don't have the solution. I'm not in law enforcement. I trust Chief Riddick. But I've got to believe they're being hamstrung and handcuffed, no pun intended. They are not able to do their jobs to sufficiency to protect us. I believe that's the case. You have to convince me otherwise. I've looked at the numbers. I've looked at the statistics. I've looked at what the police accountability bill has done. And if somebody, you know, Chief, I'm defending where you're coming from, but I don't know how there is a legitimate argument that doesn't support what I'm presenting. I, I, I this is, I, I'm sorry that I'm really passionate about this, but if this is not our number one mission in West Hartford, I don't want to be average with the other towns. I don't want to say what's happening everywhere else. We're better. We pride ourselves in that. We always say we're better. We're the best community. We're the best this. Let's work collectively to solve this problem. I'm not blaming anybody, I never said party. We've got to get our legislators to look at the way our law enforcement, you know, laws, the, this, you, what we've done with police accountability are, are, are hamstringing our officers. I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about this. It's mission critical. Oh, we gotta solve this collectively together. And I do appreciate every member of the council, Mayor Cantor and Chief Riddick. I wanna be your ally and help you work through this so that we can solve this problem together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Fay. We appreciate your leadership as well. Uh, just a couple of additional points of, of um, emphasis there. Uh, again, we are in good communication with the members of, of our delegation and we'll plan to work closely with them over the special uh, during, during the work of, of this new committee that's been formed as well as the upcoming session. 
And uh, just to clarify, we were not trying to use the pandemic as an excuse for uh, for anything. I think the chief was talking about how certain numbers were down as a result of the pandemic because we had less traffic on our roads, et cetera. But we understand that is all that activity has uh, has resumed. Okay, uh, anyone else who I see a hand waving from Emmy? Emmy, welcome. I think you need to hit star six. Thank you for unmuting me. Yes, my name is Emmy Weil. I run a retirement home in West Hartford. And for 25 years, I haven't had my hands catalytic converter stolen, but it recently was. In 25 years, I haven't had someone tower over my 85 year old resident and force their way into my building and steal from my residents and ask me for money. So I've partnered with Safe Streets Connecticut because I'm going to write my legislators because laws need to be written, rewritten or changed or added. These repeat juvenile offenders are a big problem. And I'm so glad you're here and I'm glad I'm here. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Emmy. Appreciate your participation. Uh, anyone else we haven't heard from who's on the call tonight that would like to participate? Uh, Ms. Reinheimer, any additional guidance you have for the callers? Um, no, Mr. Hart. I do know that Councillor Sweeney would like to readdress the members oh. of the public. Certainly. Councillor Sweeney? No, I'm, I'm all set, actually. Thank you. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, we, we appreciate the dialogue we had this evening. I think the Chief talked about a number of approaches that we've implemented. Um, things, again, that we've been doing for some period of time, things we are working to improve, as well as some new strategies that we are employing. Uh, we really, in order to be successful here, in order to be successful here, I think, as, as we've all mentioned, uh, this is a, a team effort, right? Law enforcement, town administration, town council, community at large, business community, working together, working together, and everyone uh, looking to do their part. Um, another thing we we didn't mention tonight, but we made a pretty neat initiative over the past year, and I want to thank and credit Mayor Cantor for this, is we now have what's called an embedded worker, an embedded worker from Interval House. And Interval House is a nonprofit organization that works in the capital region and throughout uh, Connecticut with a real focus on domestic violence. Uh, Chief Riddick, can you talk a little bit about that program and, and how it has worked? And then I think you have some motor vehicle numbers you wanted to share as well. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, Chief Riddick speaking. It's been a tremendous asset. Uh, we have a social worker from uh, Interval House uh, being paid from a grant that the Interval House um, a supervisor applied for and received. The individual uh, works here uh, at minimum one day a week. Uh, mostly on Mondays for obvious reasons. Um, you know, a lot of the, you have the weekend and between people being off, holidays, you know, partying, uh, the whole nine, you know, domestics occur over the weekend. So uh, not only is the individual here to assist and provide shelter for victims of domestic violence, uh, they also educate our personnel on the resources available, our personal leading public safety personnel available to the victims, you know, one neat uh, piece of equipment slash paperwork that Interval House provided, it's called like a, a shoehorn. And what that is, is uh, it has information for help that a victim of domestic violence can utilize and call discreetly, and it can fit within their shoe. That information has been provided at various businesses uh, throughout our town. Uh, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the exact number, and we leave that so if someone's there, they can see it, you know, just, you know, grab it, go to the bathroom, whatever the case is, and then make that phone call. So we're very pleased uh, with our progress with that. We hope to expand and get additional days. Uh, but given how we're still in the middle of COVID and the like, uh, again, kudos to 
uh, Mayor Cantor for bringing this possibility and this partnership together and, and making sure it came to fruition. So very appreciative. Uh, you know, Mr. Walsh had asked for some motor vehicle stats. I do have that data uh, now. And uh, 2017, we had 6,216 motor vehicle stops. In 2018, 6,053. 2019, 6,169. And 2020, 500, excuse me, 5,476. Thank you very much, Chief. Those are fiscal year, I'm sorry, fiscal year numbers. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Mayor Cantor, I have a few concluding remarks, but before I, uh, I speak to those, anything additional you'd like to say tonight? Well, I'd just like to reiterate a thank you to everybody that uh, participated, um, quite your questions. Um, you know, and I, I do appreciate uh, the passion uh, and, and the respect. These are not easy issues. So, um, and they're, and I, again, they're they're dependent on a lot of things. A lot of things that are happening around us uh, that we can't control. And again, we we do what we can and control what we can. I I also want to thank from the bottom of my heart the West Hartford PD that come out every day and deliver their best for us uh, to keep us safe uh, and protect us and our homes and our businesses. Uh, and visitors to our community, and they have our full support, and we are so grateful for all they do every day. Um, and I have had the benefit of seeing individual uh, residents that uh, might have a, a, an interaction with an officer, and the, the public doesn't see it necessarily, and even some of my fellow counselors don't see it, but the, how grateful our, our residents are for their professional compassion and, and um and caring uh, away and their bravery and courage. Um, and I also wanna give a shout out to our, uh, our uh, public safety chair, uh, Carol Blanks um, uh, for her work on the committee as well. So um, and with that, I'll give it back to you, Mr. Hart. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, just to add to the mayor's comments, I mean, one, one thing I, I hope we all take um, that, that we all take heart in is the the strength, the talent, the integrity, the commitment, the drive that the men and women of the West Hartford Police Department have. And we've we've touched on that a little bit tonight. You know, I've I've been very impressed by them in my almost uh in in my four plus years here, you know, their their ability to de-escalate certain situations. Um, their ability to solve crimes relatively quickly, their creative approaches. We really do have an excellent team here in our PD with uh, truly tremendous leadership under, under Chief Riddick. But as we've talked about, you know, the police department is just part of the equation. We also have uh, strong departments that support them in social services, our school district, our fire department, our town council, uh, myself, all, all very supportive here and uh, committed, committed to this effort over, over the long term. Uh, West Hartford, we talk about this a lot and uh, Councillor Fay touched on it earlier. We are one of the premier, we are one of the premier communities in the nation. We don't take that for granted. We're not resting on our laurels. We value uh, our quality of life and public safety is an essential component of that. So thank you all. Thank you all for joining us tonight in our virtual format. We're going to look to do more of these and uh, we'll get better at it, right? We'll get better at it as we go along and hopefully we'll be able to do some in-person ones in the not too distant future as well. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and uh, we'll provide a link to uh, the recording of tonight's session on the town's website. Thank you again, Chief Riddick, uh, Mayor Cantor and uh, all of our council members and members of the community that participated tonight. And thanks to Ms. Reinheimer and the great staff at WHCI for your facilitation. Take Excuse care, me. everybody. Uh, be safe and enjoy the rest of your summer. Mr. Hart? Yes, Ms. Reinheimer. Oh, Chief Vernon Riddick would like to address um, or have some closing remarks. Okay, thank you. Chief? 
Thank you, Mr. Manager, uh, Madam Mayor, and everyone else. Uh, thank everyone. Uh, Mr. Walsh, thank you uh, for your passion. I often say, uh, uh, with no friction, there's no change. Uh, but uncontrolled fiction can be an explosion. So we need a little bit every now and then. Uh, that's fine. And, and no way am I saying that different things that are occurring are not impacting our police officers and our public safety. Not not at all. Uh, what I'm, the message is we need to rise above it. You know, that's what we ask for our personnel. Um, you know, in no way, shape, or form am I saying that I haven't seen a boldness uh, that has surfaced recently without question uh we are now keeping a new stat we didn't keep before we had uh, 48 vehicles take off from us from about mid uh february of this year through last tuesday of last week 48 vehicles that fled and put our lights on it just wouldn't stop uh, and we did not engage in pursuit uh we've heard some of the violence that was mentioned uh earlier in this call we can we go back to the 80s and in late 70s with carjackings we've heard that term before uh, but now you know people are coming out trying to protect their property and you know some of these individuals are shooting at them that's wrong you know that's against the law so i do believe that you know some of what's going on here there is a boldness there is a lack a huge tremendous lack of respect and a feeling that people can just do whatever they want to do when they want to do it so i'm not blind to that you know, at all but having conversations like this evening they are very productive and having the support of the entire town is huge whether we agree or not having the overall support is huge so i want to thank all of you um, specifically our police officers for what they do every single day and uh that's all thank you mr manager I appreciate your support uh madam mayor and the fellow counselors thank you so much thank you chief that's a very good note to end on. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us tonight. Enjoy the rest of your summer, and we'll look forward to seeing you around town.